Welcome to the recap from today's live stream. Those of you that join me, thank you so much. And those of you that are watching the replay, I sure do appreciate it. I was working on garden dance, and this is a textile piece I've been working on for quite some time. It's got primarily bullion knots and French knots and colonial knots. I went a little bit not crazy. And I thought I was close to being done, but after talking with everybody in the live stream, it was determined that I needed beads, a lot of beads. So we did mostly a lot of discussion around what color beads might go where. Um, I did do a few little knots. I think I will point them out a little bit later in the video uh, where I had to balance out some white because I had two patches of white and I needed a third batch. But I really like the idea of taking these brown beads and putting them around the outside edges there, kind of grounding it because uh, I'm calling this garden dance, so it looks like a garden to me. So to have soil and rocks, that sort of thing. So I'm going to go dig out my brown beads in a variety of shapes and sizes and put them around the outside. This is ultimately going to land on a canvas that goes on the wall. I was concerned about the, the blue bullion knots and wondering if I needed to pile more of them on top, but they convinced me no. Uh, the green bullion knots need something. Everything is very heavy. And while we were talking today and we played around with a few different little bead colors there, which you will see, uh, I like the idea of some green or bronze ones down, you know, maybe at the end of the tendrils. I really feel like I need to put something on top of the mass of green bullion knots and on top of the blue. I'm playing with the idea maybe of adding some silk ribbon. I didn't mention that in the live, but I thought about that after I went offline, that maybe I can do some silk ribbon, just kind of tack down sort of like it's laying across the green bullion knots. And I have maybe some green ribbon. I don't think I have any blues. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe a fiber or something on top of it. But I do want something that's a little more fringe-like, turkey work-like, um, I don't know, something kind of flopping around up top there, in addition to the beads that we talked about. One of the other things we talked about uh, primarily today was about how to set a price for your work. And it's so hard to do. It's so hard to decide what is the value of your time and materials. And there are a lot of people that aren't interested in the business part of it, and that's fine. You can just ignore this part. But for those of you that are talking about building a business with your art, make sure that you value yourself and the time that you're putting in on the work because other people will see that value in your work. It's uh, really exciting to sell something, to think that you created something that somebody else wants to buy. But to give away your work for dirt cheap, is not going to do a good service to you or any of the other artists in your community. Uh, the basic, I guess, rule of thumb is uh, take your materials and two to, two to three times materials and then your hourly rate. The thing is most of us don't keep track of our hourly rate and several people pointed out that a lot of the materials that we already have on hand in our studio, we maybe can't restock very easily. If you're somebody that buys from uh, beautiful vintage linens from France, you're never going to be able to replace those perhaps at the same price that you got them at a year or two ago. So it, it is a constant um, process, evolutionary process to figure out how to figure out what to charge on something like that. I don't have an easy answer for you. What I can tell you I do is I do try to keep a general idea of my materials. Most of my stuff is recycled, so I'm I don't feel like I have a whole lot of material investment. Time-wise, um, my, my hourly rate has changed over the years as I get more confident and more experience and more interest in my art. My hourly rate does change. I also make a point of whenever I'm doing a live stream, whatever I'm working on is something that will be for sale so that I don't have to feel like I'm losing time with my community by, you know, hanging out with you guys for an hour and a half or two hours and it's like oh gee but I'm not doing anything for my job you know I am because whatever it is I'm working on even if I'm taking more time because I'm doing the live stream whatever I'm working on in the live is something that will eventually end up being for sale 
Uh, I can't remember any other great little nuggets that we had as far as pricing our work, except to, to put a value on yourself. Don't give your work away all the time. If you're trying to build a business, don't, you know, make a journal that took you a month and sell it for $20. You're worth more than that. Your art is worth more than that. And yeah, there's a lot of people around willing to sell it cheaper. That's not necessarily a good thing. You know, a bargain isn't necessarily a good thing. Okay, back to the beads. I tell you what, we're trying all kinds of things. And what I'm doing right here now on the green bullions, this is really hard for me to figure out. Is that what it needs? Some little bits of white? And that's where we were really split 50-50. Should we put piles? Should we? We. You guys are all going to come over and help me sew on this thing, right? Should I be putting little bits of white beads or off-white beads at the top of those tendrils and then the same thing on the upper right side? or not. I'm kind of liking the idea of some small seed beads there. It's growing on me the more I look at it and I definitely have to do this sort of thing where I put it down on the, the piece and then walk away and come back and look at it later. I can rarely, rarely make a snap second decision that this is a good thing or this, this is not going to work for me. But yeah, I would do the same thing up at the top and I'm thinking as I'm watching this in the, in the replay here, um, the, the whiter beads are growing on me and especially if I figure out what kind of little whether it's turkey work or just some loose really loose long loopy knots or a combination of those and some maybe some loose ribbons some fibers uh, get something kind of fringy happening on top of those things I think that will be good I think right now as I'm looking at it what I'm wondering if I do some kind of a fringy work and you can't see me pointing to the screen, but I'm pointing to the big blob of blue down there. There's going to be beads in there, but maybe I will take some shades, some embroidery floss, uh, maybe three or four different shades of it and do some turkey work or some kind of fringy work coming in amongst those. So it's kind of waving. And now I'm looking at it, I'm pondering. I know maybe some big brown French knots around the outside. There's going to be another piece of coffee dyed fabric behind this when it goes on the canvas. So I could do some more French knots on there or I could use the French knots to adhere it to the other canvas. That's another thought. We were debating whether or not to put more beads in this little flat area where the yellow is. But I'm, I'm tending to think maybe just a few little loose white ones where they look, as Fiona was pointing out in the live, like seed heads popping down and like they've just kind of popped off the dandelions or whatever seeds dandelion seeds would float they wouldn't pop off but you know they would just fall off and land on the ground there interestingly is until I put the brown beads around the outside and I hope I remembered to save that part of it where you could see a whole bunch of the brown ones down uh, it was looking like an underwater thing to everybody. And then when I put the brown beads down, then it looks more like a garden. So I was really glad to come to that conclusion. This piece has taught me an awful lot. It's taught me some stuff about fabric painting that I didn't realize. It has taught me uh, the value of experimenting with stitches on something that is not the main piece you're working on. I did way too many experiments on this piece and then had to unpick them so I now have several more pieces of scrap fabric that I can experiment on first. It's taught me a lot about color, uh, thinking in color terms. Okay here we go, more of the brown little beads going around and you kind of get the idea that it's going to be, you know, the dirt. I um. Sorry for the motorcycle in the background. Not a whole lot you can do when you're doing a voiceover and you can't control the outside stuff. Um, I'm thinking I'm, I could even, if I wanted to, come in around the edges with some um, with a paintbrush and some dark, dark coffee and maybe make it even darker around there. But I think I can do it with knots and fibers and beads. I have a lot of brown beads, so I think that's going to be fun to do. This piece was not designed with anything in particular in mind. This is a result of Susan's mind gone wild. And what the heck's wrong with that, right? When we're creating, it's, it's wonderful if you're one of these people that can sit down and sketch out a design that you want to do and you can follow that, awesome sauce, more power to you. 
I don't have that in me. <laughs> Maybe someday, but mostly the, what I can do is look at a picture and say, okay, I kind of like this color combination. And then I just, I just roll with it. I felt like doing feather stitch, so I did feather stitch. I felt like doing colonial knots, so I did colonial knots. I don't know. I guess it goes back to the same way I was when I was writing books. I was always uh, somebody that just kind of sat down and spewed words out and then had to whip them into kind of some kind of shape where it made sense, whether it was a poem or a short story or a novel. I had to figure out how to edit it into shape. It's a little bit harder to edit once you've stitched some of these things down, but you can do it. Take a picture, put it into your, your graphics program and play around with different colors, play around with different backgrounds, different frames, whatever it is you need to do. I put little blobs of you know color on places to show where I might do some knots. But most of all, you know what I'm gonna say, right? It's what I always say. Keep playing around with your project as long as you're having a good time. And I'm having a blast with this project. I had so much fun playing with different bead colors with everybody today. It is still sitting out here on my desk and I'm gonna stare at it for the next few days while I decide you know, what I'm gonna finish with. But I really appreciate all of you and those of you that watched the video yesterday about being a guilty kind of artist. Thank you, if you haven't seen it already, I hope you go check it out. But most of all, I hope you go create your art your way, just because it makes you happy. Mm -hmm.